friends here the frugal crafter it's been a while since i've done any recording because i've been away teaching on monhegan island in port clyde maine um and this is one of the paintings that i did when i was teaching um there were these beautiful poppies on monhegan island so uh that was the basis of this painting here and we are going to paint it together I am going to sketch with a couple of watercolor pencils and I'm using a couple colors from the spring and fall collection by Prima. I'm using kind of an olivey green looking color and kind of like a pinky fuchsia color. And for paint I am going to be using my sommelier paints and the colors I'm using are carmine pink, uh, olive green, lemon yellow, and thalo blue. And uh, so it's a, it's a pretty easy palette. I'm going to be working on Arches watercolor paper, which is what I used here. I am going to use a smaller sheet of it, though, just to make the um, presses go a little bit quicker. And this is uh, the cold press paper, but you could use hot press if you prefer. You could use rough. It's all, you know, all comes down to what you like to use the best. So I'm going to start off by very, very lightly sketching an oval the size that I want my flower to be. So um, this is a great way to kind of figure out how much space you want to take up with your flower. So I'm going to keep this really light because I might not um, want all of those lines. And then I'm going to indicate where I want the center of the flower to be, and I'll do that a little bit darker. And um, it's almost like kind of like a gumdroppy shape. Kind of like that, so it does look like a gumdrop. And then what I'm going to do is just kind of go around and very loosely, kind of holding my pencil very lightly, kind of wiggling my uh, pencil as I go, um, just put in some, like, a, a row of petals here. I haven't divided them apart yet. I just want to kind of get them in there. And then I'm going to do the outside row the same exact way. And it's okay if you go outside of the lines a little bit because you, you don't want kind of the pink lines just hanging out there on their own. So it's better to go um, out a bit than I think to leave the pink line just kind of hanging out there, if that makes sense. So there we go. And now I'm just going to kind of look and see where can I divide some of these petals up. I know I'm going to want like an, a turned leaf there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Maybe I'll even put one there, even though it's a little different than what I did before. I still think it would look nice. I think I'll divide that petal like that, maybe divide that one in there, and maybe that one right there. And then that's going to have like a little fold in it. So that gives us a really good um, just basis for our flower. And now I'm going to switch colors because I'm going to draw the greenery and I don't want to have to compete with, um, with red. I don't want it to turn brown. So I'm going to first start by putting in a stem for this guy. And then I am going to figure out where I want to put my buds, and I'm just moving my reference painting so I can, um, so I can look at that. Um, I'm gonna kind of put like ovals, kind of like a, it almost looks like a snake head type shape, wherever I want a bud, and then I'll pull my stem down from there. I want another one over here. I always think they're kind of like little babies looking at, looking up at their mama. I apologize if my voice is hoarse. I think I kind of came down a little bit of a cold because my ear was a little has been a little sore. So um, please forgive me. <laughs> and I'll do another one right up here, kind of reaching up high. They can have a little bit of a point. They're almost like an almond or a football shape, honestly. And then um, for my like a uh, little flowers. I'm just, or not flowers, leaves rather. They're just kind of these skinny, spiky shapes. I like to, they're nice to put some movement in too. So I just do like a, like an S kind of line and then I just put some zigzags. And this, these pencils have a lot of pigment in them so you might not even need to add much paint when you get to the point where you're, um, where you're adding color, where you're painting. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's uh, when you start off with watercolor pencils, you can really make a lot less work for yourself down the line. I've had really good luck with these Prima ones. I have no idea as far as like light fastness, um, how light fast they might be. So that's why we're using them with other watercolors. So the the other watercolors will definitely be light fast if you're using your tried and true colors. All 
right, I think that's pretty good. That's about all I can fit in this space. And now I am going to just bring my water over. Hopefully I won't cast a shadow on my palette. And I'm going to set those pencils aside. And I am going to go ahead and wet one of my petals. Oh, another thing you're going to want here is your credit card scraper. So I am going to reach behind me and grab one out of my bin. All right, so I've got a, a little scraper right here. So what I'm going to do is wet one petal. Actually, I think I might, I'm going to wet this whole entire area here just with clear water. And when you're wetting this, and I'm just using an Aqualon, a number 10 Aqualon round, doesn't really matter, whatever you're comfortable with. I am going to make sure I go right up to those edges and I kind of activate that um, pencil. That way I won't end up with a surprise later by having some pencil unactivated. Sometimes you'll come across some of it and um, then you'll get this really big burst of color where you didn't anticipate it. So I want to kind of get that uh, all activated right now. And I'm going to grab some carmine, which is a kind of pinkish red. If you don't have carmine, you can use any sort of cool red. And I'm just going to add it in, especially around the center where it would be a little bit darker usually because it's more in the shadow. And I want to get it around these uh, turned over petals so that it'll have nice contrast when I go and paint those. But the key is to kind of have a light touch and let the white of your paper show through in some spots because that's what gives it um, a nice feeling of light. And while that's still wet, I'm going to grab my uh, my credit card scraper and I am going to scrape in some veins. And so start at the edge of a petal and, and you want to aim for the center. It does not take a lot of pressure here. You can also start from the center out, but you just got to make sure that you're bringing those lines off kind of like sun rays so they don't get, um, let me tip it up here for you, so they don't get like all parallel. You want them kind of coming out in like a starburst type of formation. So I don't want to bother any um, other petals around here while those are still wet. If you do feel like it's too dark or you want a little texture, like that crepey texture that petals sometimes have, if you grab a paper towel and just blot, sometimes you'll end up with some cool texture. But um, it will dry a little bit lighter, so keep that in mind. So now I want to uh, get some of these little buds liquefied because I can't, all, that petal pretty much touches all the other ones, so I need to work somewhere else. And I am just going to go in and wet this bud. And you can see how the um, the pigment is just kind of liquefying there that we sketched with. It's not quite as dark as I want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, do a couple colors here. I'm going to add some lemon kind of in the center towards the top. And I could even add a little bit on the stem. And if you want to switch to a smaller brush, you can, because that's, you know, kind of big for this area. I've got this number six here. Uh, number four, I'm sorry, number four. This is a Lowell Cornell Comfort um, Golden Tacklon brush, and it comes to a razor sharp point. It's actually really, uh, a really nice one. It's, it's more uh, marketed for decorative artists, but it works really well for any time you need some detail. So I can even go in and paint some, like, the ribs. On, you know how they get kind of that striation on the on the head there. I can go in and paint that. It's not going to hold a tremendous amount of paint and water though, so kind of keep that in mind. It's good for this type of application, but um, if you were trying to do a wash, it just it's not going to hold that much water. Now something else you can do here is go in with your credit card scraper and just do little picks, little almost little dashes, and this will give you that fuzzy texture, those little hairs. And you can do that on the stem as well. Just vary your direction so that they don't all come out the same. And we'll do that again for the other buds. You'll wet them, add pigment, and then do the scraping. I'll do one more with you, and then you can do the other one on your own. Save a little, a little recording time. Save a little time out of your busy schedules. It's summer, the kids are home from school. Can't believe how quiet they are. I think they're still asleep, actually. And so I like to add, I like to concentrate this color down a little bit closer to the bottom. Get it in the stem. And then we can go in and scrape.
And sometimes you can even drag the, uh, the little hairs out a little bit and that looks nice too. I just do a little suggestion. You don't have to go too crazy with it. So let's see. I'll show you how to do the leaves too because I think that still might be a little damp. Now the leaves are pretty easy. Sometimes you don't have to do anything else other than just liquefy them. And just, just uh, I like to kind of, when I'm, brush, when I'm brushing here, I like to kind of lead out with the tip of my brush a little bit. I like keeping some of the, the lines because I think it has a nice expression, uh, expressive quality. And see, even just doing that is kind of pretty. When I zoom in a little bit, you can see a little bit better here if I zoom in. So right now that's all wet. I can go in with a little bit of lemon if I want to add some or a little bit of the, just little touches of the olive or sap green, whatever you're using here and there and let it wick kind of in. But I just kind of let it, it's really shiny so it's probably hard to tell. I just let it kind of float around and um, do its thing because I think that's how watercolor is best when you let watercolor work with the water. I want a bigger brush though. I think that's not going to, it's not holding quite enough water for me. I like a number 10 round but this is a smaller paper than my other painting so it is, it is a, a little bit challenging to get in those small spaces. But a good brush should give you a nice sharp point there. I can go and just kind of tap that darker color on the little spikes on the leaf and just kind of let it flow in. So uh, you can go ahead and finish up your petals and your buds and then we will come back and finish up the, uh, the flower part in the center. Okay, we're gonna go back to the flower. I just did the other buds the exact same way that we um, did the first ones and the leaves. And I dried it with my heat tool just to save a little time. And now I'm just going to wet another one of these petals. I'm gonna go over here to this one. And again, we wanna make sure that we activate any of the, um, any of that pigment from our pencils that we sketched on with. It's really mostly important too. If you're going to do a background later, um, you might end up with a bunch of pink in the background if you didn't activate this at this stage. So uh, I'm not going to put a background on this, but it's good to know in case you decide you want to. So I want the bottom, this petal here, to be a little darker than the one in front. So I'm just picking up that carmine right off the pan. Since I'm not mixing it, I'm just kind of taking it as it is. And then I'm just going to add a little bit here and there, just kind of let it, um, let it flow around and not really worry too much about, um, about anything really. So again, turn your paper to make it comfortable for you and you want to drag in any veins like towards that gumdrop in the center. And don't worry if you don't have it quite dark enough as you're going to want it finally because we're, we're, we'll go in and do some glazing at the end where we just kind of go in and add um, little darker layers. I'm going to go and do this petal now. Just basically skip around. And I mean since it's just one color it wouldn't be a huge deal if you um, if you did go do two colors next to each other, but then you wouldn't have that definition just by having, just by wetting the petal and adding your color in, that will give you a little bit of a hard edge on the side and define your petals. So that's why I'm doing it this way. That's a little dark. I'm going to add a little bit of water in there to spread it out. I don't want it all one tone though, so I like to have it kind of, um, kind of variegated, you know. There. Okay, so I think that, um, I will skip over here. I know those two are going to connect it, are connected, so I'll just leave a little bit of a gap when I get to that wet petal right there. And actually, you might do this in two parts since I've got this area here that's underneath a turned petal. And I like to keep my darker colors right like under those turned petals so that it makes them look much more dimensional. And then I will come around and wet this petal. It's 
just I did touch into that other one. I was going to try to leave a gap, but I did accidentally get in there because this brush is kind of big. That's all right. It's watercolor. It's supposed to look watery. It's supposed to look um, kind of free and wishy. Go right up against that dark line from the other petal because I like to have that the interior petal edges a little bit lighter. I just think it helps with uh, making it look kind of realistic. And now scraping. As long as you pull towards the center, it's going to look um, it's going to look okay. I'm going to do this petal now. And feel free to use a, a brush that you're comfortable with. If your brush feels too big, uh, go use a smaller one. The nice thing about sketching on with our watercolor pencils is that. I can um, I can get rid of any lines that I didn't need, like the my our original oval that we drew. That's right there. I can just kind of scrub over that and get rid of that for the most part. Darkest color right underneath that where those petals meet, so it helps divide them. And I think what really makes this pretty is the fact that you're not overdoing it; that you're letting the watercolor do what it wants to do. Okay, so I'm going to let uh, these two petals dry before I go into that other petal, but I can show you glazing while we're uh, while we're here right now. And I do recommend switching to a smaller brush just because um, you don't want to be bringing in too much color. And kind of what I like to do here is um, I will add a little color and then I'll drag it. So I'll add the color where I want it. And then I'll clean my brush and just kind of slightly blot it and then I'll fade it out. So I'll add a little color. Let's say I want a little, I want a little color here. So I'll add my color, clean off my brush, blot it slightly, then I'll just kind of drag it. And then wherever you've had veining, it's going to, um, it's going to settle in those creases and you're going to get that uh, just a little bit darker veins there so everything stays in proportion you don't have to repaint areas. Anytime you have a hard edge you don't like just go in with a damp brush and soften it. And you don't have to do this if you're really happy with the way that your colors are currently and you have a lot of uh, variety and you're um, and you're pleased with it, you don't have to add any more. I think it adds a nice bit of dimension, but not it doesn't it's not necessary in all cases. Now we're going to be using a new color now we're going to use thalo blue and we're going to take uh, thalo blue, which is our cool blue. you see that when I spread it out you can see it's almost turquoisey looking. So we have our thalo blue. We're going to use that for two different things. We're going to mix some with our olive green and we'll use that for shadows on our buds. And we'll mix up another puddle of it with our carmine. So we'll put add carmine to that and we're going to make a really deep um, kind of purpley color and that's going to be used in our center, the center of our flower. So um, I think it's still, I think it's, well, we're going to let that dry really well before we attempt to paint that. So while that's drying, we'll go in with our mix that's got the uh, thalo blue and green and we can go in and add any sort of, you know, details or shadows or anything that we want in our buds. And again, I'm going to go in and paint, clean my brush, blot it, and then soften everything. Thalo is a staining color, so only do one bud at a time unless you're a fast painter because otherwise you could end up with colors that you can't soften out because the thalo is already stained. So any place where you feel like you just need to pick things apart because they've gotten kind of too smushed, you've lost your um, definition, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, just to be sure that my center is dry, I'm going to blast it with a heat tool. And it usually only takes a couple seconds and you can totally use a hair dryer if you don't have a heat tool. It doesn't really much matter. 
And before I do that center, I'm going to finish up that last little petal there because um, I don't want to forget about it. So we're going to do that same way. We're going to wet that. And then we're going to add in our color. Make sure you're, you know, you've got your paper held so it's comfortable for you. And then we scrape. And then we can also put a little, very pale wash of the uh, pink on any of these turned over areas. You don't need a lot, just to tone a little bit. There. Okay, so for the um, middle of our flower, we've got this color that we've just mixed up and um, you can see it's kind of like a desaturated violet kind of a desaturated blue violet and this is the uh, really this is the lightest shade I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you hopefully it's not too glary with the uh, with the wet paint and once you have that painted in you're going to want to take your credit card scraper and you are gonna put those little um, kind of like little fingery furry um, hairs on there just like kind of just like the buds head okay and then um, while this is still wet what I like to do is on my palette I try to mix up a darker color that doesn't have quite so much water in it so I clean and blot my brush and then I go and just grab um, the paint right off the pan and add it right in there trying not to add too much water so you don't want to do this with a natural bristle brush or one of the brushes that are faux fur brushes because they will hold too much water you want the golden tacklons which are the more plasticky brushes for this Oops, some more carmine we get a much more intense color and I can even add a little bit of the olive green into that if that seems too bright but that will kind of muddy it so I would only do that very sparingly and now I'm gonna can dab that in around the bottom to kind of give it a little bit more of a shadow. Now with that same color, it's nice and dark, you can go with your finer tip brush, and I'm just gonna keep it zoomed in for this, and you can um, load it up, twirl your brush in it so you get a little, like I'm just gonna twirl it so I get a nice point, and then I can drag out a few of these little little lines. I don't know if it's pollen or if it's some of the times you get the oriental poppies and they have like a they have really dark spots in there and you can do that if you want to or you can just have some kind of random little streaks out. I always start with fewer and then decide if I want to add more and you generally have them on the two sides and the bottom because it's on that back pedal too but because of the the center of that flower stands up so much it's really hard to see that so I just try to keep them right around the uh, the bottom and the sides of that center okay so now what I want to do is dry this really quick again so that I can do a little glazing on the center and build up that color so this will just take a second you can see the sheen start to go off when the sheen goes off then you're uh, you're getting dry yeah, I think that's good. When the paper cools off, if you touch the paper with the back of your hand and it feels uh, room temperature, then it's dry. If it's cool, then it's still damp and it will your lines will feather. And now I just want to put in um, kind of a little, little semicircle there to give that top of that flower some dimension, top of the center. And then I'm going in with a damp brush and I'm just going to fade out the edges so it is a little softer looking. And I'm going to grab some of this stronger color and just paint in over where I did the little scrapes to make it a little bit more solid. But I'm just doing the dabs. And then any other details you want, you can add if you want to do more shading on the flower itself. Um, sometimes that's pretty just to either, you can even paint in some more veining. If you feel like your credit card veining wasn't enough, you can go ahead and paint some veining in there. Sometimes that's pretty because it's going to be a little bit thicker than your credit card veining. So you get kind of almost like um, folds and crepe, that crepey texture and shadows. 
just be careful going over the purple that you just put in there that you don't um, get that all to bleed. But I think it's that variety that you get in color that makes it look really nice and fresh and lively. Because that's what you're going for, the impression of this beautiful flower just blowing in the breeze on Monhegan Island. It's such a wonderful place. Everywhere you look, you see somebody setting up an easel to paint. It really is um, such a vibrant artist community. There's trails to hike. It's, it's just lovely. I do encourage anybody that gets the opportunity to go um, visit Monhegan Island in Maine. And I'm going to zoom out so you can have a look at this final painting. Um, and there you have it. It was a lot of fun to paint, and I hope you give it a try. And I'll just show you the difference between the one that I did um, when I was teaching the ladies that, uh, that I worked with this week. Um, I, I did spend a lot more time on this one, so you can tell the kind of the difference. That one had a lot more time put into it, but, uh, but essentially it's the same idea, and uh, I hope you give it a try. Take as much time as you want. You can go online, look at pictures of pink poppies to get some different um, pictures to go by, and have fun with it. That's the most important thing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope my voice didn't bother you too much. I know it's a little hoarse, um, but I do appreciate you sticking around till the end, and please give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you're not a subscriber hit that subscribe button for uh, about four new free tutorials every week thank you so much for watching until next time happy crafting